My name is Jessica. I'm a dietitian from Palmetto Health, now known as Prisna Health. Um, it's our level one trauma center. I work in our surgical trauma ICU. We're going to be talking about our retrospective review where we compared volume-based feeding to the traditional rate-based feeding within surgical patients. Here are my disclosures. In 2009, we know that the critical care guidelines had some mild evidence to suggest feeding protocols within your intensive care units to improve nutrient delivery. And by 2016, this evidence had become very strong. So we set out to determine if a specific protocol would help improve nutrient delivery within our own surgery patient population. So we decided on Dr. Highland's pep up program to see if this would improve earlier start times and maintain adequacy with a formalized protocol. Prior to PEP up, we had delayed start times, varying formulas that were used, we had slow titration rates, and really no how to for our nursing staff if intolerance occurred. If you work in the intensive care, you know sometimes those feeds get shut off and they'll address it in rounds the next day, but we wanted to have something in place so that those feeds could be restarted appropriately. With PEP up, we were able to start feeds earlier, we were able to standardize our formula usage, provide a quicker time to goal and provide that how-to for nursing staff when intolerance occurred so it would not delay further nutrition delivery. So in our retrospective review, you can see our pre pep up patient population compared to our post pep up population. As far as age and gender and ISS scores, there was no statistical difference. However, we do want to note that our post pep up patients were more severely injured on admission. So prior to PEP up, only 14% of our patients met 80% of their nutrient needs within 24 to 48 hours of starting feeds and only achieved this 80% on average day nine of their ICU stay. After PEP up, we increased this to 67% of our patients meeting 80% of their nutrient needs within 24 to 48 hours of starting and on average achieved this by day four. Statistical difference was noted on the number of days in the ICU that patients met 80% of their caloric and protein demand. Prior to PEP up, patients only met 80% of their calorie needs 26% of the days in the ICU and only met 80% of their protein demand 18.6% of their days in the ICU. With our PEP up program, we increased this to 57% of the days in the ICU where patients meet 80% of their calorie and protein goals. We also noted a statistical difference between the average number of calories and protein delivered per day along with our protein deficit and noted that we cut our protein deficit by half. With our odds ratio, we showed that with the PEP-UP program, you are 4.98 times more likely to meet 80% of your caloric demand. And with the PEP-UP program, you are 11.84 times more likely to meet 80% of your protein demand. With our effect plots, the post pep up patients are the blue line, pre pep up is the red line. Not only did we show that you are more likely to meet 80% of your protein demand early, but you are more likely to sustain it throughout your ICU stay. We, if we continued this effect plot, you would notice that prior to pep up, they would never cross. So pep up was able to maintain protein longer. As with any aggressive enteral feeding program in surgery patients, safety became a concern. So we did address those issues. We did lower our refeeding macro aspiration and diarrhea events, but there was no statistical difference between the groups. Increase in emesis episodes, but again, no statistical difference. We addressed our glycemic control and found that we significantly reduced our number of hyperglycemic events. There was no statistical difference in the hypoglycemic events, but we did reduce them. With infections, we saw that we did reduce the number of infection rates overall and saw a statistical difference in the number of pneumonia complications by reducing it from 42.1% incident to 12.5. We also wanted to address TPN usage and found that we did reduce this by having an aggressive enteral feeding program. In our secondary outcomes, no changes in mechanical ventilation, sticky length of stay, or hospital length of stay. In our conclusion, we found that our PEP up program is a safe and effective way of delivering nutrition in a surgical and trauma intensive care unit at a level one facility. And compared to our historical cohort, we deliver more calories, more protein, and associated with less episodes of hyperglycemia and complications such as pneumonia. Thank you, Jessica.